You know, it's so weird. I've never seen the full show of Fences, but the next scene that we're going to talk about is one of those videos that lives rent-free in my mind. Um, it's I've seen Viola Davis do this monologue in the movie, as well as this clip from the stage production, and both times. Ooh. Let's just get into it. All right, this is August Wilson's Fences, a play very much about racial barriers, a working class African American family in Pittsburgh. It's not easy to admit that I've been standing in the same place for 18 years. Well, I've been standing with you. Coming right here with Detroit. I got a life too. I gave 18 years of my life to stand in the same spot as you. Right from that moment, can you feel the energy of the audience? They are with her. Before we get any deeper into this, it is very hard to be effective and stay at this very tense, um, yelly tone of voice throughout a monologue if you don't have ebbs and flows and it's very high stakes the entire time. It's very difficult to hold an audience. Um, Viola does a great job of being effective, even in that register of her voice, um, for a number of reasons that we'll look at throughout this. Her getting to a point where she's doing a monologue, mostly in this tone of voice, it has to say that there has been an exceeding amount of building tension all the way up to this point. This is a very, like, climactic moment for this character. Even not seeing the show, I know that there's been a lot of probably her being pushed around and beaten down the entire show to come to this point. So keep that in mind. This isn't just something that came out of nowhere. You have to, if you're going to get to this point, it has to come from somewhere. So right there, one thing that's super effective about this is she's got, coming from a place of breath. Um, like I've talked about in previous videos, breath is your life. Duh. Um, it's the emotional source of everything for you. The reason that people know you're feeling sad and you're feeling sad is because of the way your breath is. You're happy, it's the way your breath is. There's a quiver in her voice that is so beautiful and so raw, and it keeps you there with her the entire time, and your heart breaks at the sound of it, but also... Despite all this hectic craziness and her kind of having her moment to snap, she's taking her beats and taking her breaths when she needs them. She's not rushing through this monologue. She's taking each moment in stride. And you hear that too. Despite the fact that she's keeping at this very tense, high volume, she has texturing and beats and everything. Her wants and her needs. She's hitting certain buttons in there. She's finding which moments are going to be rougher, where she's going to go a little bit softer, even if she's keeping the volume and intensity up. And let's remember, Denzel doesn't say anything for about two minutes, but if your scene partner is not active in this with you, what is all of this energy for? He has some stakes in this, and he has to remember that. He is an active participant in this. If you're being yelled at in real life, are you just standing there like, no. There's some, there's some reason someone is yelling at you. So right here, here you have... Denzel being knocked down a couple of pegs and he knows it and you can see the story playing on his face too and how this moment is making him feel. That's where it's great to have your actors take a moment to really get to know each other and find that eye contact. So you're going to want to have your actors sit down and do stuff that like a Meisner technique 
Miki, where you just look at each other and say the same line and feed off each other's energy. Look up those techniques where it's like, look away, and then look at your partner, and say the first thing that comes to your mind, and they repeat it back, and you go back and forth, and just listen to each other, and bounce that energy right back. Those kinds of basic acting exercises are going to keep both parties engaged and keep the energy real and raw and true to the story. Always be an active listener on stage. Being a listener is so much more important than anything else, listening to the other people with you on that stage. You can see Denzel has his own comeback, as I've just been talking about, the way he's shuffling along, kind of evading the situation with small movements. You also have to think about how much movement is too much movement. She's giving a lot of energy. It's going to be very hard to take focus from her. But still, if you make move movement that's too sudden, too big, uh, just too much in general, it could detract from what she's giving. He's not disinterested in this conversation, he's just afraid of it. And that has to be clear in his physical acting. And upstairs in that room with the darkness falling in on me, I gave everything I had to try and erase the doubt that you wasn't the finest man in the world. The only way I was gonna survive was your wife. You always talking about what you give and what you don't have to give. But you take too. You take. And don't even know nobody's giving. And despite some of the little shuffling that Viola does here, she's very planted. I think for the most part it's like she's shaking with anger. There's no way she's going to stand completely still. But she's good about staying on her center of gravity so that it doesn't just fall apart and get chaotic. So she's nice and centered with very minimal shifting. And dynamic shift. First watching this, my thought was, you know, he's knocked down a few pegs, that's it. Um, but having a big energy shift like this, where all of a sudden he becomes a dominant character again. <sighs> it's a frustrating emotional response from the audience over here. Um, we even see physically they've turned as if the person that remains where Viola was for the majority of this is the dominant and the submissive is on stage right. So then they switched around. Whether that is an intentional shift or not, I just find it very interesting that we're keeping dominant and submissive on the same spot depending on where the energy shifts, they move to those places. So now he's towering over her. And in that moment, let's always remember our triangles in directing. Um, Denzel, for that last bit, maintained the apex of the triangle, making him the dominant character in the scene. The two others tried to take that spot from him, and he punctuated the end of the scene as the victor, unfortunately. But that is the power of the directing triangle. So always remember your triangles when thinking of um, power shifts. That was a little moment from Fences. I really enjoy that section that they chose to uh, record and share with the world because it shows a beginning, middle, and end to the moment. Um, that's not just the beginning and end of Viola's monologue. You get to see nice power shifts throughout and um, the struggle to be the alpha 
in the scene, you're not left with just satisfaction, not even close. It's this looming tension that you thought was being resolved with this big moment for Viola Davis's character. So it's a very, it's more interesting than anything else. Here the video ends and the work begins. Let's support each other.